In this video, you are going to learn how to create this awesome immersive parallax effect step by step right inside Figma in less than 15 minutes. Let me show you how. All right, so to make this parallax effect work, we'll need three things. We'll need Figma, we'll need Adobe Illustrator, or a site that could help us convert the AI to SVG files, which we'll also cover later in this video. And we'll need a nice color for vector image that we can get from a site like Freepik or any site with visual assets. That's it, so let's dive in. Before we even start designing, we need to figure out the composition we'd like to create uh, because if to create a parallax effect, we need to have multiple layers that we can split into foreground and background elements. And this could be photographs with clear separation lines between the foreground and the background, which we could get from a site like Unsplash or Pexels. But in our example, I went with a nice color for vector image from Freepik, which I'll show you how to get in a minute. I decided to go with a colorful wilderness scene, uh, so I headed out to freepeak.com and searched for a vector image that has mountains, trees, and a hiker. So what I'm gonna write in here is, I'll just type in mountain, hiker, trees, vector, and let's see what shows up. Okay, so and that's the that's the one I actually downloaded. So this is this is not a, I think that's not a premium asset, might be let's see yeah that's that's a premium asset so for for this example i went with a premium asset but i'm sure if you look hard enough you'll find a similar vector file that's free to download and free to use for your personal needs let's go over and download this file and of course remember to download the files and the description you'll get access to all these images that we will be talking about in this lesson let's open the folder you can see here we have the EPS file extension, which you want to be able to open in Figma directly. And you need to go to a file converter site. Let's go to google.com and let's type in our EPS to SVG file converter. And Cloud Convert, I think that's one of the most popular free converters available online. So let's select our file, that's this one and just convert it. And while it's processing, I'll show you how I would go about opening this in Illustrator. So let me find this folder again and open up the folder. And one more time, let's open this with Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so Illustrator is opening up. Let's see how our converter is doing. Right, so it already converted our file to SVG. So let's uh, download it. And in the meantime, I'll show you how I would open this up in Adobe Illustrator. Move my screen just so you can see the entire thing. So let's select it all, click Command plus C, and then go over to our Figma. Ba -ba -ba -ba. And inside of Figma, just click Command plus V. And then this will paste our vector file just like that. And now we can resize our frame. I mean, you don't have to, but let's do it. So just like that. Now here comes the boring part. So we have to go over to your groups here on the left layers panel and start selecting all of your assets individually and trying to combine them into bigger groups. Now it's really crucial to find an image that you can split into separate layers uh, to add some depth which is what makes the whole parallax effect work. So one more time, you need to remember that you need at least two main layers moving at different speeds to create the illusion of them moving um, at different planes. You need to select each single layer and group them into bigger groups like the, like the background here with the mountains, um, the trees at the front with the hiker and those rocks. So we need to go over and then try to group all of these assets into the foreground and the mountains as the background. I'll speed up this part, but you just you need to know that we need to go over and then select each of these layers individually, group them, and then possibly also name them just to see what you've just uh, created as a group. Our image is ready. And as you can see, when I click into my, like into single layers, you'll see now that these have been grouped up into, let me just scroll up to see 
the entire group into shadows, highlights, birds, foreground and background. So if I turn the visibility up, you will see that foreground contains all of the elements at the front. The background contains the, the mountains. I also separated the birds. Maybe we can find a nice animation to have these birds swoop in. And I also added the highlights. Yep, as you can see here, our trees are at the front. So let me just move them all the way to the back, just so we have the rocks sitting at the front um, and the composition is just right. And you did, don't really have to go over and then select each single layer into trees, rocks, shadows, highlights, like I did here. All you need to do is you need to separate the foreground from the background. But if you went the other way and named all the assets like I did, you would then be able to animate these smaller groups separately. So let's say you wanted to have the foreground animate at certain speed, but you also wanted to make the trees grow at the same time, which wouldn't make much sense in terms of the perspective, but know that, that it's a possibility that you can pretty much animate single layers and not just the foreground and the background. But remember that Figma is not really able to render the animation that well. So we'll see a little glitches and lagging when it's when it's scaling up or down and changing the position of the elements that you see on the screen. Anyway, we have our image ready. So let's uh, go over and then create our frame. I need to click F and then select a desktop frame from the pre-made templates. And okay, let's uh, call it one. And the easiest thing to start with would be to start with this composition first and then animate this backwards to the first step, if you know what I mean, and you'll see in a second. So let me go over to our group and then click Command plus C, paste it over to our main frame, Command plus V, and then position it in the middle, just like that. Let's add our header here. So to add our header, we just need a logo, go for 32. Just zoom in a little bit, change the font weight to black, and then we'll also need a couple of pages. And these pages could be, I don't know, let's say features. And let's make it 18, enter, and then medium. And then duplicate it a couple of times. Features pricing, let's say about. So uh, select them all. Shift plus A to create a an auto layout group. Um, we might also need a call to action. So let's uh, let's type in our text. Get your ticket. Shift plus A to create a button. And let's add some padding. So 32 pixels horizontal padding, 16 uh, pixels of the vertical padding aligned at the center. Add a small fill of 20%. We can name it CTA. These we can name nav links and that we can also group into a frame and call it logo. And now select all of these, shift plus A to create a frame. We can call this a container and then shift plus A one more time. And now let's set it to the width of 1440. Place in the middle, we can add a 96 pixels of space between them and the container we need to set to Auto, just so it fills the entire frame with the respect to padding. Now uh, let's uh, build a container just so it respects the padding that we set for it. And that's 96. And now we can call this frame a header. Okay, so let's uh, drag it. Oops, let's drag it onto our frame, uh, align to the left and to the top. And let's add a slight fill. So let's make it, uh, let's say 80, like 20%. Let's also add an effect of background blur because we need to see more behind our header. And now we probably can even reduce the color here just so it's more visible against the background. And let's change the spacing to 16 just so we have a little bit more space for our header. Okay, so that's header, it's, it's done. We actually, this will be our second step. So let's uh, create some space for our first, first composition. And now let's uh, shift an option to drag it out and copy this frame and let's call it one. And now comes the parallax effect part. So let's go over to our birds first and we can 
click K to enable the scale tool and then resize them just to make them smaller, smaller like they're flying in and we can reduce the opacity to zero by clicking zero on your keyboard two times. So that's birds are done. Uh, let's select our highlight and now you see that why we took our time to name our layers because instead of going over to my design and selecting each of these elements separately I now can just select my highlights and then turn their visibility or like the opacity to zero by double clicking uh, zero on my keyboard. And now they're they're not visible. We can also lock them in place by clicking shift command and L just so we're not selecting them on accident. Now we can select our foreground and scale it up. So let's click K. Let's zoom out a little bit. And then while holding shift and an option, you will be able to resize the element from the central point. And you know what? Let me just export the, the foreground as a PNG file. So it's, it'll be a bit more lightweight uh, than the vectors, but Figma might not be able to handle this. Okay, so let's go over to our background as well and then export the background as a PNG. We can leave highlights and birds just uh, as it is. So let's drag our foreground here and let's drag our background here. Okay, so this won't work. It's uh, it's exporting an, uh, a vector file. So let's find this highlight and remove it from our composition and we'll create the background by ourselves. So that's probably this one. Yeah, so this was giving the highlight. And one more time, let's go over to the background. Just make sure we are only selecting our uh, mountains here. That's fine. And export the PNG one more time so we can get rid of that and then drag it in one more time and now it's working. Okay, so let's um, let's remove the background and foreground from here and also from here and uh, paste it inside, move it all the way to the back and now we can also remove this vector because we'll create our own background and select the foreground and then paste it in and then we can also click on the align bottom just so it's aligned, aligned nicely. Move it all the way to the back and move it one layer above the background. Okay, and what's left? We need to change the fill. Okay, let's uh, let's use the re linear gradient like so. Let's color pick from, from here. Yeah, I think that's a bit too dark. And then we can increase the saturation a little bit. Right, and we can copy the style of this background by clicking Option Command and C and then selecting our second frame and Option Command plus V. And let's do the same here. So let's type, let's uh, copy and paste our uh, mountains here, move them all the way to the back, copy and paste our foreground layers and then move them, move them one layer above the background by clicking on Command plus square bracket. So let's uh, let's go back and finish our animation. So let me select the foreground and then scale it up just like that. And now you'll see that we also need to move our mountains here just so, just so they fill out the entire frame. So let's select our background and uh, resize them just so they cover the entire thing. And, and this way we'll also animate them zooming in a little bit. So this will be our first step and what's missing is a trigger. So let's create a button and we can do something gener generic like get started and then shift plus A one more time. Let's add some spacing, a padding around our button and let's add a fill of uh, white, round those corners up and then go for like a bold font and make sure it's, it's sitting in the center, maybe a little bit below. So this will be our trigger. I think we have a stroke around our header. Yep, we have a stroke, so let's remove it. And at this point, we could stop here. This is the parallax effect. Um, so let's uh, let's animate this and see what we're standing at. So let's go over to the prototype and then select our button and click on this plus icon and drag your arrow to the second frame. And we can leave it at click and let's uh, smart animate this and we can use some custom bezier. Okay, let's make this animation a bit longer. So maybe like uh, three seconds. 
And let's drag this handle here just so it's um like it's easing in and easing out uh, nicely. Like the animation is not linear, it's gonna speed up, slow down, and then um, speed up again. And we can name this flow animation. And let's see how it looks like. And that's what I was talking about. Like Figma has some difficulties animating or our vector files. So the animation is staggered and it's it's really lagging at this moment. Maybe that's also because I'm recording this and my MacBook sounds like it's going to explode any minute. Yeah, that's the kind of animation that you would create by pretty much just segmenting your two main layers and then splitting them into foreground and background and animating them at different speeds. Yep, so that's it for this video. If you want to see the full animation, I don't want to spend 30 minutes on this. Maybe I'll create a part two of this uh, parallax effect tutorial and then we'll also create the second part of this animation, which is the smooth scroll effect when you kind of scroll down the page. Um, we want to mimic the scroll, scrolling down motion. But if you download the files that are in the description of this video, you, you'll get access to the entire thing and you'll be able to go over to the prototype mode and then see for yourself how, like what are the triggers here, what are the animations, what, what's, what, what's the timing we used, um, and then see for yourself how to replicate the whole thing by yourself. So I hope this was helpful. Um, this is just the first video from the series and this is my pretty much my first full tutorial on YouTube and I promise it will get better. Uh, I'm new to this thing but I want to improve, I want to make this better so with every video you will hopefully see some improvements and we'll plan to post two or three videos every week depending on how much work we can do. Thank you for watching. If you like this tutorial, please hit a like button. Uh, you can also hit the bell to get notified about new tutorials where we'll post. The next video will be about, about a UI related topic. I'm going to show you how to learn design UI design by yourself. So thanks for watching guys. Stay, stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you very, very soon. Goodbye. So guys, one more time, click on the link in the description of this video or go directly to uaadrian.gamero.com and then click on this product card right here, the ultimate Figma prototyping pack. And once you open it, type in zero as the first price, click on add to cart and leave your email right here. And then you'll be able to download the files from your camera library in the next step or two and open them in your Figma, have a play around and try to replicate what we just did. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.